Hello students, welcome to the lecture on sales forecasting methods and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the forecasting process, discuss about the importance of sales forecasting, understand the 7 keys to better forecasting, explain the methods of sales forecasting, discuss the sales and profits. Let's start with the introduction. Sales forecasting is the process of estimating what the business sales are going to be in the future. It is an integral part of business management. Without a solid idea of what the future sales are going to be, one cannot manage his or her inventory or cash flow or plan for growth. The purpose of sales forecasting is to provide information that one can use to make intelligent business decisions. Sales forecasting for an established business is easier than sales forecasting for a new business. The established business already has a sales forecast baseline of past sales. Hello class, can I explain any marketing concepts? Professor Siegfried, just what is a sales forecast? Well Sandy, a sales forecast is an estimate of how much of the company's output, either in dollars or in units, can be sold during a specified future time period, under a proposed marketing plan and under an assumed set of economic conditions. Let us discuss the forecasting process. The forecasting process refers to a series of procedures used to forecast. It begins when an objective is determined. It is important to know when one should use qualitative or quantitative forecasting techniques. Manager apply quantitative forecasting techniques when environment is predictable and if they have data from past period about sales. These techniques are good when one wants to predict existing products and technologies. They often use mathematic techniques for forecasting. Qualitative forecasting techniques. Qualitative forecasting techniques are sometimes referred to as judgmental of subjective techniques because they rely more upon opinion and less upon mathematics in their formulation. The absence of past sales means that one has to be more creative in coming up with prediction in the future. Quantitative techniques. Quantitative techniques are sometimes termed objective or mathematical techniques as they rely more upon mathematics as less upon judgment in their computation. These techniques are now very popular as a result of sophisticated computer packages. There are many quantitative techniques. Regression analysis statistically relates sales to one or more explanatory independent variables. Exponential smoothing makes an exponentially smooth weighted average of past sales trend and seasonability to derive the forecast. Moving average takes an average of a specified number of past observation to make a forecast. Box Jockins uses the auto-correlative structure of sales data to develop auto-regressive moving average forecasts from past sales and forecast errors. Trendline analysis fits a line to sales data by minimizing the squared error between the line and actual past sales values. The line is that projected into the future as the forecast. Decomposition breaks the sales data into seasonal, cyclical trend and noise components and projects each into the forecast. Straight line projection is a visual extrapolation of the past data which is projected into the future as a forecast. Life cycle analysis based the forecast upon whether the product is judged to be in the introduction, growth, maturity or decline stage of the life cycle. Simulation uses computer to model the forces which affect sales, customers, marketing plans, competitors, flow of goods, etc. The simulation model is mathematical replication of the actual corporation. Expert systems use the knowledge of one or more forecasting experts to develop decision rules to arrive at a forecast. Neutral networks look for patterns in past history of sales and explanatory data to uncover relationships. These relationships are then used to produce the forecast.
Let us now discuss the importance of sales forecasting. Sales are the lifeblood of a business. It is what helps one pay employees cover operating expenses, buy more inventory, market new products and attract more investors. Sale forecasting is a crucial part of the financial planning of a business. It is a self-assessment tool that uses past and current sales statistics to intelligently predict future performance. Sale forecasts are also an important part of starting a new business. Almost all new businesses need loans or startup capital to purchase everything necessary to get off the ground. Office space, equipment, inventory, employee salaries and marketing. Sale forecasting is a self-assessment tool for a company. One has to keep taking the pulse of one's company to know how healthy it is. A sales forecast reports graphs and analyzes the pulse of the business. Let us now discuss seven keys to better forecasting. Sales forecasting is a management function that companies often fail to recognize as a key contributor to corporate success. From a top-line perspective, accurate sales forecasts allow a company to provide high levels of customer service. Key 1. Understand what forecasting is and what it is not. The first and perhaps most important key to better forecasting is a complete understanding of what it actually is and of equal importance what it is not. Sales forecasting is a management process, not a computer program. This distinction is important because it affects so many areas across an organization. Forecasting is critical to a company's production or operation department. Adequate material must be obtained at the lowest possible price. Adequate production facilities must be provided at the lowest possible cost. Key to forecast, demand, plan supply. One mistake many companies make is forecasting the ability to supply goods or services rather than actual customer demand. At the beginning of the forecast cycle, it is important to create predictions that are not constrained by the firm's capacity to produce. Consider the forecaster for a certain product who questioned the company's sale force and learns they could sell 1,500 units per month. At the same time, current manufacturing capacity for that product is 1,000 units per month. If the forecaster takes that production capacity into account when creating initial forecasts and predicts 1,000 units, there is no record of the unmet demand of 500 units per month and the information on where to expand manufacturing capacity is lost. Key 3. Communicate, cooperate and collaborate. Companies that forecast most effectively consider it critical to obtain input from people in different functional areas, each of whom contributes relevant information and insights that can improve overall accuracy. But employees are often unable or unwilling to work across function to achieve high levels of forecasting performance. To do so requires a great deal of communication across department, boundaries and not all communicating is equal. Some companies are simply better at it than others. Key 4. Eliminate islands of analysis. Islands of analysis are distinct areas within a firm that perform similar functions. Each area maintains a separate process, thereby performing redundant tasks and often having the same responsibilities. Because islands of analysis are often supported by independent computer systems, which often are not electronically linked to other systems within the firm. Information contained within the different islands is not shared between them. Key 5. Use tools wisely. Many companies tend to rely solely on qualitative tools, the opinions of experienced managers and or salespeople to derive forecasts, ignoring such quantitative tools as regression and time series analysis. Alternatively, many companies expect the application of quantitative tools or the computer packages that make use of them to solve the forecasting problem. The key is that both quantitative and qualitative tools are integral to effective sales forecasting. To be effective, however, they must be understood and used wisely within the context of the firm's unique business environment. Without understanding where qualitative techniques, time series and regression do, and do not work effectively, it is impossible to analyze the cause and achieve the benefits of implementing new forecasting tools. Key 6. Make it important. What gets measured gets rewarded and what gets rewarded gets done. This management truism is the driver behind our final two keys. 
Sale forecasting is often described by senior management as an important function. But although this assessment may be shared by individuals throughout the firm, few organization institute policies and practices reinforcing the notion that forecasting is important for business success. There is often a gap between management words and their actions. Key 7. Measure, measure and measure. Obviously, before forecasters can be rewarded for excellence, a company must first develop a system for measuring performance, tools for providing feedback and standards and targets for what constitute forecasting excellence. Without the ability to effectively measure and track performance, there is little opportunity to identify whether changes in the development and application of forecasts are contributing to or hindering business success. This key may be intuitive for most business managers, yet this research has identified surprisingly few companies that systematically measure forecasting management performance. Let us now discuss the method of sales forecasting. Sales forecasting is difficult when one does not have any past sales history to guide as is the case when one is working on preparing cash flow projections as part of writing a business plan. Three methods to estimate sales revenues for the purposes of Sales forecasting is to consider the average sale volume per square foot for similar stores in similar location and size, number of households needing goods and living within a mile and how much would they spend annually and estimate sales revenues for each of the five product or service lines. Popular methods are jury of executive opinion method, the sales force estimation method, time series analysis method. Jury of executive opinion method. It is a method of forecasting using a composite forecast prepared by a number of individual experts. The experts form their own opinions initially from the data given and revise their opinions according to the other opinions. Finally, the individual's final opinions are combined. In the jury of executive opinions methods of sale forecasting, appropriate a manager within the organization assembled to discuss their opinions on what will happen to sales in the future. It's part of a set of techniques that are useful in situations where past data do not exist, causal relationships have not been identified, or some major change has occurred in the forecasting context which is not accounted for by other techniques. A similar forecasting method which has been developed recently is called the Delphi method. Delphi method also gathers, evaluates and summarizes expert opinion as a basic for a forecast, but the procedure is more formal than that for the jury of executive opinion method. The Delphi method has the following steps. Step 1. Various experts are asked to answer independently and in writing a series of questions about the future of sales or whatever other area is being forecasted. Step 2. A summary of all the answers is then prepared. No expert knows how any other expert answered the question. Step 3. Copies of summary are given to the individual experts with the request that they modify their original answer if they think it necessary. Step 4. Another summary is made of these modifications and copies again are distributed to the experts. This type, however, expert opinions that deviate significantly from the norm must be justified in writing. Step 5. A third summary is made of the opinions and justifications and copies are once again distributed to the experts. Justification in writing for all answer is now required. Step 6. The forecast is generated from all of the opinions and justification that arise from Step 5. Salesforce Estimation Method it is a sales forecasting technique that predicts future sale by analyzing the opinions of salespeople as a group. Salespeople continually interact with customers and from this interaction they usually develop a snack for predicting future sales as with the jury of executive opinion method. The resulting forecast normally is a blend of the informed views of the group. The Salesforce estimation method is considered a very valuable management tool and is commonly used in business and industry throughout the world. This method can be further improved by providing salespeople with sufficient time to forecast and offer incentives for accurate forecasts. Companies can make their salespeople better forecasters by training them to better interpret their interactions with the customers. Time Series Analysis Method the time series analysis method predicts the future sales by analyzing the historical relationship between sales and time. 
although the actual number of years included in a time series analysis will vary from company to company as a general rule managers should include as many years as possible to ensure that important sales trends do not get undetected. The essential difference between modeling data via time series methods and using the process monitoring methods. Time series analysis accounts for the fact that data points taken over time may have an internal structure such as auto-correlation, trend or seasonal variation that should be accounted for. It will give a brief overview of some of the more widely used techniques in the rich and rapidly growing field of time series modeling and analysis. Other complex sales forecasting methods include statistical correlation method, computer simulation method. Choose methods of sales forecasting. Sales forecasting is a vital tool to determine the health of a business. It does not matter if a business is small or large. Being able to predict sales allows a company to plan for production and how much of a given item to buy. Companies that successfully forecast sales can increase efficiency and lower costs. Determine which sales forecasting method best suits your company. There are two methods. Quantitative forecasting uses numbers and figures that the company has calculated from previous sales. Qualitative forecasting, in contrast, does not rely on numbers, involving instead surveys of experts in the field customers and salespeople to predict sales. Think about what your business needs. While these two types of sales forecasting can be used in tandem, quantitative forecasting is used to predict sales in an existing field. Qualitative forecasting is used to predict sales in a field in which the company has not entered. Use more complex quantitative forecasting techniques to understand the variety of factors that can affect sales. Time series projections make use of trends, cycles, seasonal and random factors to predict sales. The chain ratio method analyzes the quantitative impact of a factor that could affect sales. Let us now talk about sales and profits. The product life cycle approach has been used to analyze and forecast sales and profit levels. The life cycle of a new product is characterized by four stages, introduction, growth, maturity and decline. The introduction stage is when the product is first marketed and sales are less than 5% of the market share. During this period, profits improve from negative to positive. In the growth phase, sales volume increases rapidly and positive profits continue to increase. Return on investment. The purpose of ROI forecasting is to identify the training that will provide the highest possible payback and more generally to make a wise training and development decision. The unique characteristic of our market forecast is that one goes beyond the traditional method of forecasting appreciation only to profile the income property return on investment for each market area. There are three basic components to return on investment with income properties. The first is value appreciation. The second element is leverage since most real estate assets are purchased with financing. The third element is cash flow, which represents the impact of rent revenue, management fees, taxes, insurance, maintenance, and other costs associated with owning and renting an income property. ROI helps investors evaluate the performance of an investment and compare it to the performance of their other investments. School's out for summer and Joe's children ask for some startup cash for their respective summer businesses. Joe gives each child $100. In return, they must split their profits 50-50 with Joe at the end of the summer. Joe's daughter opens a lemonade stand. Joe's son buys a lawnmower. As the summer progresses, the children work hard at their businesses. Joe's daughter sells many cups of lemonade, and his son mows every lawn in the neighborhood. At the end of the summer, Joe's son has earned $500. Joe receives $250. Subtracting his original investment of $100, Joe is left with $150 profit, an impressive 150% return on investment. Joe's daughter has earned $1,000. Joe receives $500, minus the $100 original investment, and that's $400 profit, a whopping 400% ROI. Joe earned $4 for every $1 he invested. 
Joe's daughter provided the best ROI. ROI is one of many measures that help investors evaluate investments. Forecasting ROI versus evaluating ROI. Doing ROI analysis prior to training has some significant benefits that are not possible after training is completed. Advantages of ROI forecasts are identifying the highest ROI alternatives. One can compare the expected value of a wide range of training options and then choose the highest ROI training. Helps avoid costly poor decision. Would not it be better to know the value of training before one spend money on it? Determining ROI after a training investment, especially if there is no intent to repeat the training, is at best a justification. Consistency with common business practice. Analysis prior to making a decision is the most accepted approach in business environments. Speed. In the fast-paced organization, training needs arise very rapidly, applying ROI results flexibly and accurately. Unless future conditions are very similar, one may not get the same ROI from subsequent training. Training can have entirely different results with a different group of employees. Communication. Sometimes projections from ROI forecastings are needed to sell training and to justify its value. Again, competing needs. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Intermediate forecasting is between a period of three months and two years and may be used for schedules, inventory and production. Managers apply quantitative forecasting techniques when environment is predictable and if they have data from past period about sales. Qualitative forecasting techniques are sometimes referred to as judgmental or subjective techniques because they rely more upon opinion and less upon mathematics in their formulation. Sale forecasting is a management function that companies often fail to recognize as a key contributor to corporate success. Using market research in sales forecasting can help give a clearer picture of sales potential by including factors like economic and demand trends.